Chase, come on up here first. I did it. <laughs> I cannot believe it, but I actually am holding this belt, and I can actually say that this belt is actually mine. Like, it's just so insane. I'm so thankful for everyone and everything that got me to this point. And I could go on for hours and hours listing all the names of all the people who got me here today. But I'm not going to do that because I don't think anyone wants to hear me talk for hours on end. So I'm just going to say, if you're watching this video, you know who you are. And thank you so, so, so much for getting me here to this point. Now, I wanted to make this video today because I wanted to share my journey. I know I'm now only a blue belt and my story is far from over. It's just beginning actually, but I really wanted to share part of my journey, my journey so far in Jiu Jitsu. So while I share my journey, I'm going to be showing videos for my Shark Tank. If you don't know what that is, I'm going to let my coach explain it for you. A shark Tank is when uh, they are getting promoted. Uh, 15 for a blue belt, 20 for a purple, uh, 25 for a brown, and a Shark Tank is when everybody just one minute per person. Uh, that person steps off after a minute and a new person comes immediately on them right after. So they don't get a break. It's gonna be brutal hopefully for you guys. So yeah. I've done four Shark Tanks so far in my life. So what I've learned to do best is just survive. Don't try and win. Just survive. Let whatever happens happen. So um, keep in mind when this footage, this is by no means my best sparring ability. This is just me surviving and trying to make it through the 15 minutes before I get my blue belt. So without further ado, let's get into this video. So my journey actually starts long before I started jujitsu. Growing up, I was borderline obese. I was overweight and I did not like exercise at all. Any form of exercise, you could count me out. I wanted no part of it. In fact, when I was seven, I stayed at my grandma's while my family went on vacation in Washington, D.C. just because I didn't want to walk. I'm very regretful about that decision, but that's just how bad it was. Growing up too, I also had chronic migraines, so for years I had headaches 24-7, like all day, every day, no breaks. And once a month I would get a migraine so bad that I literally could not get out of my bed and I would throw up. Sorry if that makes you queasy, but that's just the truth. So having these migraines really made it difficult for me to do any type of sport, even if I wanted to or not. I also really struggled with my self-image and loving myself. It actually came to the point where I literally hated myself so much and I hated the way that I looked and I wanted to change, but I never would put in the work to actually change. So on 4th of July in 2018, I was 13 going into my eighth grade year of school. I had one of those really bad migraines where I couldn't even get out of bed. My family had gone to a party at another person's house and I was left home alone. My dad told me, you can stay home, but you can't have any electronics because it's going to make your migraine worse. And I was like, yeah, of course, like I don't want it to get any worse. So I took a nap and then I woke up and the migraine was mostly gone and I was really, really bored. So I grabbed the iPad, I, my family has an iPad that we share, uh, I grabbed that and I looked up for n absolutely no reason whatsoever. I looked up women's boxing and the first thing that came up was not women's boxing it was women's MMA it was Ronda Rousey versus Misha Tate I had never heard of MMA before I had never even heard of Conor McGregor Ronda Rousey I didn't know what jiu-jitsu was judo I didn't know anything at all but within seconds of watching that video I knew what I wanted to do with my life I wanted to become a professional MMA fighter I immediately started looking at all the different martial arts and I found jiu-jitsu and kickboxing and I was incredibly interested in both of them. So when my parents got home that night, I told them what I wanted to do and they were less than thrilled. However, they were still supportive of me and wanted to do what they could for me. I asked my dad if I could start kickboxing classes because I was more interested in kickboxing rather than jiu-jitsu and he said no because of my migraines. So instead of finding an MMA gym right away, I started working out and trying to get myself in the best shape that I could. During this time, I would work out five to six days a week and I would research MMA almost all day, every day, any time that I had the chance, I would just research MMA. And then my 14th birthday came around on May 20th, 2019, and my parents said that I could start jujitsu. 
I was incredibly excited, but at the same time kind of disappointed because kickboxing was what I really wanted to do and I couldn't do it at the time. So on May 21st of 2019, I had my first jujitsu class. The way my parents found the gym was through my dad's work. He asked around at his job, just asking people if they knew of any MMA places, and there was a woman there who was a blue belt and went to this gym. So I had my first jujitsu class and it felt very strange for me just being in not typical situations, just being so close to someone. And I fell in love with it even though I was mortified slightly. <laughs> My parents could only afford to do the two-day membership, so I went on Tuesdays and Thursdays and practiced Gi. For my first month, I only stayed for one class, and that was the intro class, but then after that month, I started staying for two classes instead of just the one. Two months into jujitsu, I really wanted to spar, but I wasn't sure if I was ready. So I talked to the one girl from my dad's work to see if she thought that I was ready, and she said she thought it was perfect for me to start. So on July 25th, 2019, I sparred for the first time. I ended up sparring for so long that my dad literally had to come inside the gym to make sure that I was okay. Needless to say, I loved sparring. In fact, I love it so much that I started going to the open mats at the gym on Saturdays. After sparring for several months, I decided I wanted to do a tournament, and I asked my coaches if they thought I would be ready, and they said of course. So after some digging, I found Tap Cancer out. I asked my parents if they were okay with me doing it, and they said yes as well, so I signed up for the tournament. October 26, 2019 rolled around which was the day of the tournament, and I was super excited to finally compete for the first time. Until I found out that I was going to be competing against a boy who was over 10 pounds heavier than me. Seeing the boy I was going against, I started getting really nervous, and I started doubting my abilities. Regardless of this, I stepped onto the mat and competed for the very first time. I pulled guard, he immediately passed and got mount, and he was so heavy I could not get him off of me. I ended up losing by points, and I remember I was super upset, and I just started crying, but one of the purple belts at the gym, she pulled me aside and she was like, hey, it's not always about winning. I've lost so many tournaments, it's okay. And that made me feel a lot better. Despite my loss, I went straight back to the gym the next week and continued training. By November, I had seen a neurologist about my migraines and they had started to go away, so the doctors gave me the clear to start Muay Thai. But that's another story, another journey for another video. I continued training as much as possible and getting better, but then March of 2020 hit and along with everything else, the gym closed. I was absolutely devastated, but I was determined to stay in shape so that way once everything did open back up, I would be able to jump right back in and start competing even more. The gym opened back up in late May of 2020, but everything was completely different. The head coach and only Blackboard at the gym had to leave for personal reasons, and a lot of the people that were previously at the gym were no longer there. But I didn't let that stop me, I kept putting in the work and training so that way I could get better. By this point, I had been doing jujitsu for a little over a year, and I had made some really good friendships. Which for me is a huge accomplishment because I was always shy growing up and I didn't have a lot of friends. In December of 2020, I was asked to help coach the kids class. I said yes, even though I felt a little out of place since I was just a white belt. 2021 quickly rolled around and I was still determined to get better. Before I knew it, it was February 6th, 2021, and I was getting my green and black belt. I was in shock and I could not believe that I got it, but I was so grateful for everyone who got me to that point. Getting my green and black belt was a refresher and it made me have a new fire for jujitsu. However, this fire started dying when I started facing burnout. I would still go to the gym, but the environment felt completely different. The gym had lost another coach and it made me feel very unmotivated. I continued to show up though until my burnout went away. I kept training and competing and every day I felt myself getting better. I had found my fire for jujitsu again and I knew I was headed in the right direction. Before I knew it, on Tuesday, April 26th, 2022, I got my blue belt. I was and still am surprised, grateful, and excited for this whole entire experience. I know in jujitsu belts aren't everything, but they do signify a huge accomplishment. And I'm so thankful for everyone who got me to this point. Finding jujitsu took me from being shy, insecure, and overweight to being confident, somewhat fit, and happy. Genuinely happy. I know my journey is just beginning and my story is far from over, but I'm so excited to see what the future holds.
watching her grow, and I love even more watching her compete. I mean, she just turns from a nice little friendly girl to a demon on a mat. <laughs> so, this is long overdue. I don't know how to tie these both, but... Yeah, this is first first promotion, guys. It, like, so you're gonna tie your own? Yeah, he hardly, <laughs> knows, he hardly knows how to tie his own. Here. Okay, finish it. I think either of them know how to tie the belt. I think we know because we tied the pitch. Yeah, there we go. Good enough.